Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be doing a full face get ready with me using my absolute favourites from my mid-year faves video. So if you want to know my number one product from the first half of 2022, then keep watching. So starting off with eyeshadow, I briefly considered choosing the ABH Nouveau palette, but when I actually looked at the palettes and which one like gave me the most joy to use and was the most exciting and with my finished looks, how happy I was with each of the looks that I got from the palettes from that video. It's her. This Pat McGrath palette was just an unexpected win for me. I really was, this is one of those Pat McGrath launches that took like 15 years to make it to me. Like it took forever to arrive. And being that like the color story is not sort of my typical jam, like it's not something that I would especially look at and think, yep, that's my cup of tea. I, by the time it got here, I really was like almost wanting to just send it straight back because I just lost interest in it. It was so long since I ordered it that it arrived. You know, any kind of opportunity to review it and be helpful had long gone because it was so late arriving. And I just lost all excitement about it, forgotten all about it, forgot it existed, moved on with my life. And then I actually used it and I was so surprised at how much I loved it and loved the colour story and actually how like unique it was and how much I loved like the finished look. Like I was not expecting to like it as much as I do. I think as well for one of these sort of limited edition palettes, the quality in here is excellent like the mattes blend beautifully the shimmers are stunning and they all just work together really beautifully and i really didn't expect like looking at these colors i'm like what's that doing in there how do these work together and somehow it just does so this was definitely like an unexpected love but yeah looking at the palettes from my mid-year favorites there were the two Bridgerton ones, there was the ABH Nouveau, the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Dreams. This was just the one that stood out for me as being, you know, something different that I didn't have a hundred of, something that I get a different look out of when I use this in, you know, comparison to like every other palette. And it's just something a bit different, a bit unexpected and a bit of fun, you know, and what's makeup if it's not fun? Especially eyeshadow palette. I feel like eyeshadow palettes should be like the most fun makeup item of all really. They're supposed to be fun and play with colour and just find combinations that you didn't think would go or would work for you that you actually really love. I feel like that's like what it's all about, you know? So primer, as I'm sure you expect and are aware of, was a very, very easy choice. There was only one primer in that video for a start, but it is the Tom Ford Soft Matte Traces primer. This is not only my favourite primer for this year so far, but this has become my favourite primer full stop. I set myself a goal this year to replace the Tatcha Silk Canvas as my favourite primer because at the time, at the beginning of this year, it wasn't available in the UK and I was sick of it. I was sick of having to ask a friend to send it to me. I was sick of waiting and paying way more for it because of the shipping and all of that other stuff from the US. So I wanted to find a primer that I love just as much, that did everything that the Silk Canvas did, but was available here in the UK, and this is it. And now the Tatcha Silk Canvas is available here in the UK, but I no longer really care because I prefer this. I think it's very smoothing. It's got a beautiful mattifying quality to it without sucking life and glow and luminosity out of the skin. Like it takes away shine, and like oiliness, but it doesn't dull the skin. The skin doesn't look dull and flat. It still looks healthy and skin-like and luminous without sort of excessive shine. It makes my foundation look flawless, smooth, and it's very kind on lines and texture, and it extends the life of my foundations beautifully. So that was absolutely a tick 
in the box of my year, New Year's resolutions, I found a new Holy Grail primer. So while that just soaks into the skin, I'm going to go onto mascara and by far, I think, maybe, was it the only mascara in that video? I think the only mascara in my 20 or my mid year faves. It's the MAC Stack and this has, I mean, I loved this on first use and it has only grown on me. This mascara is now like four months old, if not older. Like I, this is the original mascara that I received in PR and filmed my video on it like four months ago. That is just insane to me. And look how amazing it still is. It gives me all of the drama. I feel like it does exactly what it claims to do, which is that it's stackable. You can do a hundred coats, coat after coat after coat, add more and more and more of it, and it will never get clumpy. It will just get bigger and bigger and bigger for your lashes, and I love it. It's got lift, it's got length, it's got volume, it's got separation, it gives me the fanned out lash look that I love. I love how easy it is to use on top and bottom lashes, and the lasting power of this, the fact that this is like months old, and it still performs incredibly, is unmatched. It makes it such good value for money because you're only gonna have to replace this a couple of times a year, isn't that insane? And now for foundation, this was again another category that was kind of tricky to pick like my favorite for my mid-year phase because there were a lot of foundations in that video that I really love. The two that I was kind of torn back and forth between was the Chanel number no. one and the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation, which is the one that I've gone for just because I find myself reaching for this one more often. And I feel like the reason is just like the shade range. Shade range is so important. Like it really, I cannot love a foundation if I can't find a good shade in it, you know? And although it doesn't change how the foundation performs, it certainly makes a big difference as to how much I want to use it and I'm drawn to use it and how much I love it. And I just find this one is so versatile. Like I can literally wear it for any occasion, you know, a day out with the kids or a wedding or an evening out with the girls or the school run or running errands. It's literally completely perfect for any event because it has no SPF. So you don't have to worry about flash photography it's long wearing, but it's skin-like and natural. It has really flexible coverage, so you can build it up from like a light coverage up to a full, and it just has a beautiful, luminous finish that's not too much. It also just has like no deal breakers. There's no like, oh yeah, but the scent is overwhelming. Oh yeah, but it's got SPF in it. There's nothing where it sort of, you know, lets itself down. Like it's a tick in every single box. And while I do think that the Chanel number no. one maybe looks a little smoother, maybe a hair smoother on the skin, the NARS does wear better than that one. So there's kind of like, you know, pros and cons. The two have like, they're very close match and they have like wins over each other but like I said I feel myself drawn to using this one more often than the Chanel and I think the main reason is because of the shades I don't have to make it work I don't have to like blend it all down my whole body to match everything up it's just easier going okay so concealer again a very easy category it's the Huda Beauty concealer I absolutely love this concealer I like it as much as the Pat McGrath, so it certainly is like joint top for me when it comes to concealers. I don't know that it's overtaken, it's really hard because there are, again, there's pros and cons between these two concealers. I prefer the applicator of the Pat McGrath, but I think this one is slightly smoother and you also get like a lot more product, I think, in this one. This one is nine mils and I think the Pat McGrath is five. So yeah, I think as far as how they perform, very similar, but the extra product from the Huda, you know, the ease of which I can get it and just that extra smoothness, I think that if I had to pick one or recommend one, I'd probably go with the Huda now 
which is insane. I did not see this coming. I did not think, I wasn't even in the market for a new concealer, you know. I really only picked that one up for review purposes, which just goes to show I should be more open-minded. You know, there's categories of makeup where I feel like I'm done, I'm retired, I'm not in the hunt anymore. You know, concealer, mascara, probably foundation as well. There's lots of like categories where I'm like, I'm not really in the market for a new one, but, so I don't, I'm less open to like trying lots of new ones and I kind of do it, you know, just to be helpful to you guys because a lot of my holy grails might not be your holy grails. You're still on the hunt. And then I'll stumble across something that's actually better than my holy grail that I didn't think was even possible. So yeah, I definitely need to be more open to the fact that even if you think something is as good as it gets, apparently, that's not the case. Anything is beatable, so I learned this year. Second coat of mascara. Okay, now for bronzer, a product that shook me to my core this year. It was the Charlotte Tilbury Cream Bronzer. As you guys know, I'm not a cream person, but I've made an exception. <laughs> an exception? An exception for this bronzer. I absolutely, what is that? A floof. I absolutely love this bronzer and I've been using it a lot, which is not like me for cream products. Typically when I review cream products, I review them, some of them I'm like, eh, yeah, it's fine, it's okay, it's it worked, it did, you know, its thing. And then they go in a bottom drawer never to be really used again because they're just not for me. This one, I had to actually create space in my top drawers for these because they're actually quite large. And I have been frequently reaching for this bronzer over my powder bronzers, which is insane to me. I never thought I would see the day. But it melts into the skin so beautifully and easily and it's so flippin' natural and it's just the perfect shade. I find it really easy to work with. It doesn't feel intimidating, you know, to get it out and use it like a lot of creams for me. You know, sometimes I just don't have the energy to like put work into products. I just want to wax and bronzer on and be done. And I just feel like this one is just as easy to work with as my powder products. I don't feel like they're extra work. I don't feel like I have to be extra careful. I feel like it's so natural and beautiful and easy to work with. And yeah, an exception to my cream hatred has arrived. <laughs> I did not see this development coming. But another one of my, you know, makeup resolutions this year was to try more creams. And I think I've been doing really well at that. In fact, I think I've been doing well at all my resolutions, but the cream one and the trying more brands, I feel like I'm smashing it, to be honest. Tried a lot of new brands and I've tried a lot of creams and liquid products, even when I haven't wanted to. And a lot of them haven't worked out, I won't lie to you. I'm certainly not become a cream person, but I have found a couple that I like, which is pretty much the goal of this experiment. Okay, so for highlight, I was kind of torn. I wanted to reach for, I wanted to choose, okay, my Bridgerton palette for highlight and blush, but I felt like that was annoying because it's not like a single, it's a palette of blush and highlight. So I felt like that was almost like cheating because I wasn't just picking like, you know, the number one thing. So I went with my number one like single in each category. So for highlight, it's the Chanel Rave de Camellia. This is just so beautiful and soft and natural. I love that it has basically no base color to it. So it's gonna work on lots of skin tones and look super beautiful. And it doesn't leave like a cast, like a lot of highlights do. It's just like glow and luminosity and a very subtle one at that. It's just super pretty. I was very tempted to use my Pat McGrath highlight. The, is it Venus Nectar? I can never remember the name of it. I think that one might be like 
my new favourite. But when I looked back over like the yearly favourites, I felt like this one has kind of been in my collection a lot longer. So I'm a bit more attached to it. But the Pat McGrath was coming in like a hot potato to challenge this one, let me tell you. So yeah, for blush, same thing. Wanted to pick my Pat McGrath Bridgerton palette, but felt like that was cheating. So I went with my number one single blushes for the year so far. And of course, it's uh, these bad boys. This is the shade Pomegranate Fizz, which is my newest one. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to show you this one on the cheeks. And look how intimidating that looks versus like the reality on the cheeks. I love how they're actually so buildable and so easy to use really softly and naturally, but you can like build up to get a real pop of blush, but you don't have to, you know? See how the mood takes you. Very easy to like build up in a gentle way so you don't have to like have a panic attack because you look like a clown and then try and do something about it. But it has, the ability to go there but you know no one's forcing you you just <laughs> take it slow take it wherever you want to go little buffy wuffy and as you can see like powders going on top of my charlotte tilbury cream bronzer like a dream and foundation sitting underneath it like a dream i just love how it like sets down to a powder it doesn't stay tacky it doesn't stay sticky which is why it wears so much better than any other cream product I've tried before, especially bronzer, because it actually like sets like a powder, like it sets itself. Now, when it comes to lip products in my mid-yearly favorites, there was a standout, which was the Dior Addict Hydrating Shine Lipsticks. These were like my favorite formula, favorite new formula, absolutely smashed it out of the park obsessed with them can't stop buying them now own three dozen of them the slightly tricky part was picking a favorite color but i think it is mimi rose it's just so pretty so pretty it's a little light for me let's see i think i can get away with it doesn't really go with my eye, eye look today but if like me you love the color of this and it's just <coughs> too light for you. This liner from Charlotte Tilbury is Pink Venus and it's perfect. Any like lighter sort of peachy colour, it goes beautifully. And it just allows me to wear this colour in summer without it like washing me out, without it sort of just looking too close to like my skin tone. So there you have it. This is the finished look, the completed favorites of mid-year favorites the champion of champions if you will okay so there you have it those are my top number one choices from the first half of 2022 in each category applied to the face what did you think were there any surprises was this the exact makeup the exact products that you thought it was going to be please let me know if you had any surprises in there or you just knew what was coming. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye-bye-bye.